Hello there bitches, my name is Jacket. And this is my show, Late News with Jacket. Today's news topic is technology. Let's fucking begin, shall we? Microsoft putting edge on Chromium will fundamentally change the web. The move will allow deeper integration of Chromium and Chrome on Windows, which will lead to major improvements in performance and battery life. Owen Williams is a freelance writer and developer thinking about new ways to get the news. He created Charged, it's a website, an independent technology newsletter and blog that helps people keep up with the news that matters. After more than 20 years of fighting for relevance in the web, Microsoft is planning to scrap the underlying architecture of its internet browser in favor of Chromium. That alone is monumental, and the internet responded with both jubilation and hesitance. As you'd expect, Internet Explorer's legacy is finally dead. But, we just learned the full picture, with Microsoft announcing the move in GitHub Thursday, and it's even bigger than we could have possibly dreamed of. Not only will it use Chromium as its rendering engine, but Microsoft is actively investing in developing the open source engine further, to best optimize it for every device it touches. A rendering engine is the software your browser uses to display web pages. Different rendering engines have different quirks and features, maintained by their own parent companies, with the largest in use today owned by Mozilla, Google, Microsoft, and Apple. Damn Jesus Finley. Let's get to the other one. A 17-year-old just designed an iPhone lock screen that might be better than Apple's. Apple's operating system platform has certainly come a long way over the past decade. It started as a bare-bones mobile operating system intended to simply the smartphone user experience, and it was welcomed with open arms considering how sloppy and overcomplicated platforms like Symbian and Windows Mobile were at the time. Then, as the years went by, Apple continued to add more and more features to its mobile software. I operating System 12 is now a feature-rich operating system with more capabilities than most people will ever use. It's wonderful that the platform has gotten more versatile as time has gone by, but it has also gotten a bit more cluttered and complex in some areas. One example of a feature that could still use some refinement is the iOperating System Notification System. iOperating System 12 introduced a bunch of big updates to notifications on the iPhone and iPad, and they are so much better than they used to be. Features like notification grouping and track muting are a great indeed, but Apple still has plenty of work to do before iOperating System notifications and the iPhone lock screen are no longer headaches for users. It'll be interesting to see how much attention these crucial features get in iOperating System 14, Apple's next big iOperating System update that's set to be unveiled next June. In the meantime, a 17-year-old just whipped up a terrific design concept that might be even better than what Apple has done in iOperating System 12. Okay, next one. T-Mobile is about to launch its own eSIM app for iPhone XS and XR. When Apple unveiled three new iPhone models back in September, the company confirmed rumors that said the new handsets would come with dual SIM support. However, unlike other devices that support the physical SIMs, the iPhone XS and iPhone XR only have room for a single SIM inside. The second SIM is a virtual SIM or eSIM, which can be configured in the phone settings. But eSIM functionality requires support from wireless carriers and the main US carriers have taken their time rolling out the new feature. T-Mobile is one of the big four that has yet to roll out eSIM support for the new iPhones, but it's working on a standalone app that would bring eSIM support to iPhone. The application will let users add a second prepaid line to their phones without going into a store or having a physical card shipped to them. The report says that the app should be available to users by the end of the year, offering support for prepaid eSIM cards initially. The idea is that users would get a secondary prepaid line for roaming and other purposes. Customers will still have to go to stores for primary lines and family plans, which will be activated via physical SIMs. Kmag suggests that T-Mobile's app should be easier to use than other eSIM options. But iPhone XS and iPhone XR users looking to add a second line to their phones should be able to do it via Apple's settings app or by scanning a QR code, which doesn't sound too complicated. GetSky and Truffone were the first US carriers to deliver eSIM support for new iPhone owners, but they are smaller than us. Meanwhile, both AT&T and Verizon confirmed to Fierce Wireless that eSIM support for 2018 iPhones is rolling out shortly. Okay, next one. Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 CX finally bridges the gap between mobile and laptops. Along with its brand new Snapdragon 855 smartphone platform, Qualcomm unveiled its latest product for the laptop market, the Snapdragon 8 CX. During the announcement in Maui, Qualcomm dubbed the 8 CX its most extreme package yet, promising a major boost to Windows performance, something ARM laptops have sorely needed. Key talking points for the new platform include enhanced AI and machine learning capabilities, beefed up graphics performance, and even faster integrated OTA support, with the option to support 5G too. The name might be a bit daft, but this is a serious chip when it comes to performance. Alright, next. Left square bracket update, Google status update right square bracket Google has removed two apps implicated in Cheetah Mobile and kick a click fraud scheme. If you were, for some reason, hoping to download CM file manager or kick a keyboard, I have some bad news. A report last week claimed that Cheetah Mobile and an associated company called Kikatech were engaged in some shady advertising practices, and now Google has responded. These two apps have been suspended from the Play Store, and Google may still take further action. 
app analytics firm Kachuva claimed last week that Giga Mobile and Kick both engaged in so-called click fraud by claiming credit for app installs even when they didn't show an ad. Giga Mobile blamed a third-party SDK for the issue, but Kachuva says Giga develops the offending SDK. Google initiated an investigation following the report and has removed CM file manager, cache, and kick a keyboard, cache. Cheetah Mobile's file manager had more than 50 million downloads, and the keyboard was north of 100 million. Cheetah Mobile also voluntarily removed its battery doctor and CM locker apps from the Play Store following the initial report. The companies can appeal the ban if they make changes to the apps that bring them in line with developer policies, but this could be just the start. Google noted in a statement to BuzzFeed News that it expects to take further actions against the developers. Chiba issued a press release after the removal to explain that losing CM file manager was no big deal. However, Kachiba also pointed the finger at big money makers like CleanMaster. That's one of the most downloaded apps in the Play Store and Dash removing it, for fraud could force Chiba Mobile to get its house in order. Moving on. Let me check if there is any other news. Looks like this is it. Goodbye folks. Swa swa swa.